So this uh, tutorial is just going to go over a new JavaScript library that I've been working on for the past few months called AMD Clean. Now AMD Clean is a Node.js build tool that will help you strip away all of your AMD code that you're using in development uh, when you're doing your production builds. So this means that you can uh, use AMD to manage and organize your entire code base during development and then once it's time to ship that code to production, uh, whether that be a web application or whether it's an open source JavaScript library, uh, you don't actually have to have an, any AMD trace. So you don't have to include RequireJS, you don't have to include AlmondJS once you distribute your, your library or your web app uh, to your users. So that saves on bandwidth and uh, it's just overall a huge win. So let's see kind of what AMD Clean is about. If you look at the website, right now it's sort of the easiest way to grok or understand what's going on. Uh, basically, it's pretty simple. Uh, we, we take our AMD code and we just make sure that it gets turned into normal standard JavaScript. So if we look on the left hand side of our home page, uh, we have an AMD module called example. It has no dependencies and it's returning a string. And on the right hand side, with our standard JavaScript text area, we see that that same AMD module is being mapped to a uh, local JavaScript variable that's, ge that's being set to the same string that was being returned in our AMD module. So if we continue and keep on writing uh, some code, let's define another module, we'll call it example2, and this module will depend on our first example AMD module. And right now I won't return anything, I'll just leave it empty. Uh, so you'll notice that in the standard JavaScript text area, we have a new uh, example2 local JavaScript variable has been defined, and it's being set to undefined. Is this a bug? Uh, you're probably asking yourself. Uh, this actually isn't. This is what um, is supposed to happen. Uh, we've been working, me and a few other people, have been working to optimize uh, AMD Clean. So basically, uh, AMD Clean looks at this, this example2 AMD module. It says, hey, nothing's getting returned inside of our factory function. There's actually nothing inside of this callback body. So because of that, let's just set it to undefined. Now if we return something, let's say that we also return a string in this one, so this is so cool. A ton of exclamation points. It's a ridiculous amount. Uh, you'll notice that AMD Clean has converted our example2 module into a, a function expression that is, autom that is invoked immediately. So it's invoked immediately and it's, it passes our example um, variable right from, from above. So it makes sure to map all dependencies correctly. Uh, it's pretty cool. So now that we've seen these really basic examples from the site, let's take a look about how we would actually create a JavaScript library using AMD Clean. I'm just going to switch over to uh, Sublime Text here. Uh, what you'll notice is I'll show you the directory structure. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm calling this a Lodash clone. That's my directory. Let's just pretend that we're going to go ahead and make a Lodash clone for no reason, but just for educational purposes. Uh, so, let's see, we have a source directory where all of our source files will be held. We have a package.json file, and we have a grunt file. So, let's first look at the package.json. The only thing to really note here uh, is our dev dependencies. So, these are all the things that we're going to be using to build our library, our Lodash clone library. The first thing is going to be grunt since we're using Grunt.js as our build system. Uh, the second thing is going to be the Required.js Grunt plugin. Since we're going to be using the Required.js optimizer to build our, our library into one file, and then after the, the optimizer does its magic, then AMD Clean steps in uh, and removes any of that AMD trace. And, like I mentioned, AMD Clean, which this talk or this video is about, we need that as well. So, let's make sure uh, to npm install and grab all of our dependencies and install them locally. And once that's done, uh, let's take a look at the uh, grunt file. So the way AMD Clean is working is it's using this um, this event hook, which required just the required just optimizer provides uh, the on module bundle complete. So this actually gets called after a file has been written. So after this entire uh, our project is built into one file this is when that on module bundle complete uh, method will get called. So essentially what we're doing is we're saying, okay, once our 
uh, our project is built using the RequireJS optimizer, then we're going to clean it using AMD Clean. And this is pretty much uh, where the magic happens, right here. So the only thing to note, actually, you know what, we'll come back to this in a little bit. But for now, uh, you'll notice this include property. Now, Lodash clone, um, that's an actual JavaScript file that I'm referencing. I'm saying, hey, uh, required JS optimizer, Lodash clone is the entry point to my application. So let's look at Lodash clone. So the only thing Lodash clone now is it has one dependency, and that dependency is is called is array. So if you're not familiar or you're not used, you haven't used required JS before. Typically, if you see something like this, most people what they'll do and what I recommend is uh, these are called alias names for your for your dependencies. So um, is array is a path that maps to a certain JavaScript file. So all of your uh, paths are set up inside of a configuration file. Um, let's take a quick look at our configuration file. So in our config.js, we have two different configurations. Uh, let's see, well, one configuration, but two different paths, excuse me. So let's see, the first path is going to be, we're going to create a lodash clone alias name, and that's just going to point to lodash clone.js. It's an actual JavaScript file. And then we're going to have an is array uh, alias name. So it's it's easier to type is array than it is to type module slash is array. So I like to, to set up path names for all of my, my JavaScript files and then include those JavaScript files that, as dependencies using those path names. So again, uh, since we know that we have these configurations set up, uh, we can quickly go back to the Lodash clone and we can say, okay, um, I'm saying the is array uh, path alias name is a dependency for Lodash clone.js. So once we load that is array uh, .js file, then we're just returning an object inside of our uh, AMD module. So if we want to look at our dependency first before, since we've seen most of this file, uh, the is array, it has no dependencies. And let me just open up the source directory so you can see. Uh, it's inside of the modules directory. I like to consider this a module uh, to my library. So it has no dependencies. I'm just wrapping in a define method, and I'm returning a function. And then I'm just saying, hey, let's make sure this is actually an array. Uh, and let's just call the toString method on the object prototype to see if it's an array. So I'm just returning a function. That's all I'm doing inside of isArray. And then, again, inside of Lodash clone, I'm returning an object. And the only object property that I'm returning is that isArray function. So if we go back to our grunt file, uh, basically what we want to do is we say, okay, our entry point to our, our library is Lodash clone.js. And I want to build a file called Lodash clone.js inside of a build directory. So not only that, I actually want to make the Lodash clone module. I want to make it global. I want to make it global on the window since this is going to be a client side library that people are going to be using. So I'm actually using the an AMD clean uh, option. There's a ton of options, uh, but the global modules is one. And it says anytime that AMD clean runs into a module ID called Lodash clone, it'll make sure it gets attached to the window. Um, besides that, let's see here. We have this wrap, which is very similar to the RequireJS wrap. It just says, hey, wrap, wrap our, uh, our library inside of an immediately invoked function expression. Um, and that's really it. I'm going to make sure not to optimize the code just so we can easily view uh, and understand what happened here. But you know what? Let's run our grunt.js build. Let's go back to the command line. Again, we're right at the root directory. Let's just type grunt to run our grunt build. And voila, uh, it created a build directory since I specified build slash lodash clone.js. So if you open up our lodash clone.js, you'll see a few things. You'll see that this is all the AMD code has been stripped away. So since the is array module was a dependency, a dependency on the Lodash clone uh, module, it was included first in our file. And not only that, but AMD, clone, AMD clean uh, took the time to optimize our AMD module. So it, it removed any of those uh, function wrappers, because again, we're returning a function. 
So it removes the outer function and just returns this automatically. Uh, let's see, so we have our isArray function and we have our lodash clone function, uh, which actually returns an object. It's, it's called immediately and it returns an object. So uh, after that, we, we set window.lodash clone equals our, our local variable lodash clone. So if you want to see that this works in something like a JS bin, uh, I have that open right here. And let's just say, hmm, I'll console something out. Um, lodash clone dot is array. I'll have an empty array. All right, so I messed something up here. Let's look. Object. Right. We got these. Gotta love live demos. Cool. Okay, so now it is, in fact, an array. But you'll notice that uh, all that AMD code is gone, and this is just normal JavaScript. So there is a lot of potential uh, with AMD Clean. It's already pretty mature as a project. Uh, so that's just a very brief example of how you can create a JavaScript library with it. But you can also use it for, for, uh, for web apps. And the benefit of using it for web apps uh, is you'll probably save about, I would say, 8 to 12 kilobytes. Um, if you want to see an example of a web app sort of uh, architecture that's using it, you can check out the Backbone of Fire Boilerplate. Uh, GitHub repo, and uh, that's using AMD Clean. But, but yeah, so I'll create more videos and show uh, a few more things, such as how to use the comma JS uh, syntax with AMD Clean, uh, and all sorts of crazy fun things. So thanks for watching, and I hope you got something out of this.